Hi guys, um, let's continue with our discussion on common source amplifiers. Uh, from the pre previous few lectures, we've been discussing um, common source amplifiers and ways to improve their gain. And you know, at the same time, we want to improve the gain by not sacrificing on various other parameters. So in, in that journey, we come across another design that I want to discuss with you about. Um, and as a, of course, uh, before we start on the lecture, it would be really great if you are thorough with, oops, transconductance uh, lecture, and there's another one called the MOSFET uh, IV characteristics basics, and all of the common source amplifier lectures. All right, if you're already thorough, then don't worry. But if, it would be great if you know these three stuff today for this lecture. Okay, so as I told you before, it's very difficult to integrate a, let, let me first draw the basic common source amplifier, RD, okay, okay, so uh, we, we've done a lot of stuff with this RD right here, um, we, we, uh, we made it uh, into a diode connected load and all that stuff, and as I told you, it's very difficult to integrate this discrete resistance into a silicon chip. So what we do is we try to bring in the MOSFET equivalent of this. Um, and, and in that process, we come across another design. And this here is way out right here. And this is VDD. OK. So in that process, we come across a new design. Um, and it's called, uh, this is VN, as usual. This guy's really good. You know, he never changes. So he's always the same. But this way right here is changing. Okay, this is V out. This is V D D. And here, let me draw the com the one that we discussed before with the diode connected load. Correct. V in, V out. You know, I keep drawing these things again and again so that you know they just they just blend into you. Okay. Um, all right, so uh, this was the diode connected load, and we were saying that it behaves as a resistor for some time, as a small signal resistor, and we derive a lot of equations for these. So here, what we do is, um, again, from this lecture, MOSFET IV characteristics basics, what we know that a transistor, uh, an NMOS, that is biased. Oh, let me talk about biasing later. But suppose it, it, it is behaving. I mean, it, it is working in the in the triode region. What happens is it behaves as a resistor, right? As against it behaving in this, it, it working in the saturation region where it behaves as a resistor in parallel with a current source, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So all we need up, up here is a resistance. Okay, so. Voila, what, what do we have here? If we have a voltage that can make this transistor remain in triode, we have a resistance, right? Instead of integrating this discrete resistance there. So that's the new design we're going to talk about. Okay, so what will it look equivalently in a in another circuit? Uh, so, so this voltage that we're going to give this transistor is not the same as Vn. It's going to be Vb. B stands for bias. What is bias? The function of bias is to um, is to give a suitable voltage. A, a bias voltage is a suitable voltage to make a device function the way you want it to. For example, suppose um, you come to a store and, I, and I'm the store vendor, and you say, "Hey, so I, you know what? Hey, I want a um, a transistor that is biased in saturation." Okay, so what I do is I take VB and I increase it to some extent where this transistor is now in uh, saturation. Okay, if you say you want it in triode, I would decrease it to a certain extent and make it work in triode. So it, it is nothing, it's just another voltage, but uh, it makes the device behave the way you want it to, and then it's, it's fixed there. Okay, that's what is bias voltage. So finally, when you bias it to behave uh, to remain in triode, what the circuit looks like is very simple. V in, 
the out and RD. Uh, let's not call it RD this time uh, because it's a transistor, uh, which is in triode. We call it a new thing called R on, and because it's transistor two, we're going to call it R on two. Okay, just forget this part. Uh, okay. Now, now that we have R on two, it, it let, let us derive the equation for R on two. Okay, and now we we're going to derive from this place transconductance, right? Trans from the transconductance lecture, what do we know GM stands for? It stands for uh, th this is a, a PMOS, remember? This M2 is a PMOS, so this is going to be in terms of PMOS. So if you want to have the GM of a PMOS transistor, you're going to have mu P times W over L, here in the case 2, and the voltages inside are going to be VSG minus VTHP, okay? I'm putting VSG because in a PMOS, VGS becomes VSG, okay? Everything becomes reversed. In the previous lecture, I said VGS minus VTHP, but what that means is I put a modulo sign outside of it, you know, to denote the absolute value. So forget that now. Well, here I'm putting VSG, so we're good to go. And it, because this could be anything, we put a modulo sign there as well, okay? VTHP. Now, how are transconductance and resistance um, related? It's nothing. It's very simple. When you talk in terms of a device being in saturation, you know that the device behaves as a resistor and a comp current source, right? So, just to make it simple, in layman terms, okay, why it's called transconductance, how, I mean, how I remember when I study is when it's in saturation, it has a current source, and current source is going to conduct, okay? And that's how it's got a transconductance. Whereas in the, in the triode region, the same thing is called 1 over R, okay? Resistance. But, but just because in the triode region it behaves like a resistance, we have only this term. So it's, oh, it's, it's nothing, it's just, a, it's just an inter interchange or swapping of terms, okay? But GM is always equal to 1 over R, okay? So when we talk about the design in terms of a resistance in triode, we're going to talk about R on, okay? So because GM equals 1 over R, R on equals 1 over GM, right? Equals what? 1 over this thing. If you don't understand, I would really like it if you could pause this video, rewind, and come back to this, okay? VSG minus VTHP uh, mod there, okay? Let me take a different color. Okay. Now let's expand this one. It's 1 over mu p, w over l, 2, uh, 2 here. And VSG is what? Vs minus Vg minus mod of VTHP. Okay. Okay. In this design, what is Vs? Uh, let me draw it again for you. V out, V in, Vb, Vdd. Okay, so if this is a PMOS, the source is connected to Vdd, right? So Vs becomes Vdd, and Vg is Vb, the bias voltage. Okay, so R on is now finally equal to 1 over mu p times W over L, to VDD minus VB minus VTHP. Okay, that's all it is. So that's the resistance offered by this PMOS transistor if it's biased in triode. Okay, let's call it R on two. Okay, but if you analyze this equation, just look at it. Whoops, I'm so sorry. I j I think I forgot uh, the Cox term and all these things. You see, I tell you to watch the videos, but I myself am not thorough with the equation. I'm sorry. Cox. Everywhere has a Cox, okay? I'm sorry about that. So, when you look at the dependencies of this resistance, the resistance depends on P, it depends on Cox, it depends on the device dimensions, it depends upon a whole lot of voltages. Okay, if you look at here, 
mu p c ox and v t h right the threshold voltage these things are dependent upon the fabrication industry the fabrication plant whatever you design they're never going to be the same after they come back from the fabrication plant that's why you should give some leeway for for such irregularities but when you have to design an amplifier and you need a resistance of perfect value or else you're not going to get the gain right so when you need an amplifier and you want the perfect value you're going to have to pay extra attention to what your MUP, your CEOX, and VTHP are. And then you also have a bias voltage that needs to be, that needs to bring this transistor to the triode region. So you need very good accuracy here, which will in turn demand that you create a precision circuit rate, right? So all this is really complex. So we generally keep out of this design. Again, uh, the gain would be very simple. GM of the input device, right? Times whatever resistance is connected above V out, okay? So R on 2. So we generally keep away from this design just because it's so complex, but there is a good thing to it. Now, what would that be? Let's see. Uh, just picking a different color. Okay. If you compare the design we spoke about just in the last lecture, V out. Let me make this really quick. V in and, and this is V out. And this is V B. V in. V D D. Okay. What you'll see happening here is in this uh, figure first. Let's talk about V out. The largest value V out can ever reach is VDD minus VTHP. Why? Because this transistor, as I told you before, a diode connector transistor is always in saturation. I will create a separate lecture showing how, but for now just understand that. This transistor is always going to remain in saturation. If it remains in saturation, it is on. If a transistor is on, definitely, definitely a value of VTHP or more has been spent to switch this transistor on, correct? The threshold voltage has been spent. So in the voltage coming from there to here, it's definitely going to be reduce, re reduced by VTHP. But in this transistor, in this design, if VB is zero, okay, this transistor doesn't switch on if it's even if it's lesser than VTHP, okay? It doesn't switch on, right? If it doesn't switch on, VDD is directly copied to V out. So the maximum voltage of this circuit is VDD itself, right? So it can go up to VDD, but this V out can go up to only VDD minus VTHP. So I'm going to introduce a new term here called headroom. What is a headroom? It, it, it is some space for you to move move around freely. Okay. Coming back to our building analogy, let me take a different color again. If you look at how much space there is for V out. So this much amount, say VTHP, has already been spent here, no matter what. So your V out can just swing around there. But here, in the building, your V out can equal VDD as well, right? So it has a larger headroom. It has a larger headroom. Headroom. So that's how this design is better, the one with the triode load. But, of course, as, as application demands, we keep switching from uh, the best optimal design. All right, that's what I want to talk to you about. Uh, great, thanks for watching. We'll continue our discussion on common source amplifiers for, for a few more lectures. See you guys.